Now, your cheap sports desk. Well, the feel-good vibe in Port St. Lucie certainly continued today. They welcomed in a special instructor, a well-known Hall of Famer. Mike Piazza is in camp to give tips to any player who wants to bend his ear. And by the way, it looked, looked like everybody wanted to talk to him. July is going to be a special month for Piazza. Of course, he will enter into Cooperstown. He will also have his number 31 retired by the Mets. Earlier this week, we spoke with Mets shortstop Wilmer Flores about many things, like how baseball is taking notice of the crisis in his home country of Venezuela. But we start things off by talking about the new opportunity this guy has of playing more than just shortstop. He will be asked to play every infield position. Yeah, well, uh, thankfully I have played all, all those positions. Uh, I played second base, I played third base, so uh, it's kind of a challenge for me, but, you know, uh, I'm really familiar with those positions. Uh, I, uh, I've never really played uh, first base yet, but, um, you, know, uh, I'm, you know, I'm open to play uh, anywhere they want me to. Yeah, I mean, you brought up first base. You played 20 games at first base in the minor leagues. What's your comfort level there? I think I think I'll be fine. You know, I'm gonna try to uh, make the adjustment that I have to make. But you know, I'm gonna work uh, with tough. Uh, uh, anything I have to work on, and we'll take it from there. But uh, you know, I'm, I'm not afraid to do it. I think uh, I'll be just fine. Listen, I want to talk a little bit about Venezuela because 65 players are on Major League Baseball rosters from Venezuela. It is the second most foreign-born players in Major League Baseball. But because of economic and civil unrest there, MLB is shut down operations in Venezuela. How damaging is that to the country? Yeah, it's, it's definitely, uh, uh, well, we're all disappointed because of that, but, you know, I guess it's because of the situation over there. Um, you know, they just uh, they left the country, but uh, you know, th there's not there's nothing we can do right now. You know, with uh, everything that's going on over there, but you know, all you can do is just keep playing and keep working hard because we have no control of that. All right, a couple of weeks ago, Manhattan basketball coach Steve Massiello paid us a little visit, and in the midst of this live interview, Coach Massiello found out that I was not a fan of Italian food. I'm sorry, but he was offended at first. But then he decided to use it as a teachable moment. My appetite education took place at a restaurant Coach likes to call his second home, Molino's in White Plains. Welcome back, Steve Overmeyer, alongside Manhattan coach Steve Masiello. Coach, I can't believe what I just heard. You're shaking your head. This right is unbelievable. Now. We were you don't like Italian these. food. We were this is more it. important that you don't like Italian food. Tu fala americano, americano, americano. So this is where the education begins. This is where it starts. This is my opinion, best Italian there is. Taking you to my my home. I wouldn't steer you wrong now. You know I would do the right thing by you. When I heard last two weeks ago please that you don't like pasta i took it personal and i had to bring you you have no idea how many people were just absolutely offended no well, it's, it's it's borderline offensive to yeah, be honest right. i mean have you ever heard of such a thing someone not liking pasta this is tortelloni stuffed with prosciutto franco he's a little Please. slow with italian terms so you might have to explain what some of these pastas are i apologize how are we doing it's a good thing I'm sitting down. My knees would buckle. Boy, you're right about that cheese. That just adds an extra layer, doesn't it? How does basketball change, you think, in the city? I think um, too many third parties are involved. The best analogy I can give is if you go to a restaurant, you're going to let the chef prepare the meal, and you're going to trust what he does. And I think in basketball, kids don't trust the coaches, and I think a lot of the kids, they turn to the wrong people for advice about their future. It's, it's hard sometimes because sometimes those people are people who love you or you love. Right. But I don't go home and talk to my mother about how to play a pick and roll. I think the social media thing is hurt. Hurt a lot. Kids get told how great they are at such a young get age, man. get told how great man. they are and, and everything I mean, is confidence edited. is a good thing. Yeah, but you got to do something. You got to accomplish something. You can't go out and lose by 20 and have a good, you know, say, tell someone they play great. All right, thanks to the coach for that education. Stick around. We'll be right back.